All right, so here we are back again. We're working on uh, Unreal Engine 4 Pong, and we're going to make some uh, functionality with our menu. So we set up our, uh, our, our GUI here, and now we're going to make it actually do something. First thing we're going to do is go back to our level blueprint, just save that, uh, go back to the menu, save that, just exit out all this stuff at the top. We don't need all these open. We just need one thing. Good thing to always kind of clean up, keep yourself uh, efficient. All right, so what we want to do, let's go back to our HUD. Inside our HUD here, Hold on one second. Yeah, let's have a look at what we got. So we've got some buttons. We've got a little panel here. Let's start pretty straightforward. We go to player one, and we want to make it so when we click this button, it does something. What is it going to do? It's going to load into another level. Actually, let's make sure we're clicked on the button and not the text. Button right here. Let's click it right here. See, it says events on click. Hit plus. You see, it'll open a whole new window, the event graph. This is just a different tab. So this is the designing and this is the functionality. This is the on clicked. So when this button gets clicked, it'll do something. Shouldn't be too bad to uh, figure out what to do. All we have to do is just drag off from it and type in open level. What's the name of the level? Well, that's the name that we set up earlier under our levels tab, P1 main. Because that's going to be the player one one. That's the one we set up with the, uh, with the, the one player game with the uh, AI opponent. So that's going to be P1 main. Great. Let's see what happens when we go ahead and compile and save and then play this. Go to menu, make sure we're on that. Play. Play, 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 play. Nothing. Interesting, right? Why is that? Let's have a look around and see what's going on in our scene and why it wouldn't be actually uh, firing to the correct area. Alright, so in fact, I think it was just a little bit of a, it might have been a bug with the uh, editor or something like that. All I did to fix it was I just dragged off from here and typed in print string to see if it would work. And then it did work, and then I deleted the print string, and now it does in fact work. So I'll just go ahead and hit play. Hit player one. Boom! It loads right into the next level. Looks pretty cool, right? But you're noticing, probably, that you don't necessarily want to see this come up uh, right here. You want to see uh, the normal actual gameplay. So let's fix that. way we can do that, super easy. Drag off from this guy and just do remove from parent. And that'll just remove the HUD as soon as we load into that level. Go to menu, go to play, hit play. There we are. Cool. All right. So we have our second button. Go back to the designer here and click on, uh, click on the button itself. Click on clicked. What is that going to do? That's going to load into another uh, level. Uh, but we haven't made that level yet. So for now, let's just copy this over. And this should do the exact same thing. That's okay for now, right? Yeah, that looks good. Later on, this will become P2 main for player 2. We're going to do a, a two-player match. Then, uh, a little later on, what do we want to do? We want to make it so that when we click controls here, it toggles this on. Um, so we can actually see it, right? We want to be able to see, oh, okay, this comes on. But not just when we click it, when we hover over it. That's what we want. So how do we do that? Go back to here. We're going to do a, uh event tick. So this is, you know, happening every single frame. And in this, we want to do an if statement. And what we want to do inside of here, and we're going to do over here with it, is hovered. But this will check it'll check an input for if an object's being hovered over. Like, for example, let's say the controls button. And if it's being hovered, hovered over, what do we want to do? We want to make it so that that panel turns off, right? So if it's hovered over, it turns, I'm sorry, it turns on. And if we're not over it, it should turn off. How do we do that? Let's go back to the designer. Right inside here, we go to controls. Okay, we got our button. We don't need that. What we do need is this panel. That's why we made this panel, so we can turn all these on and off at once. And you see there's a little thing over here, so set, hit, Test invisible. Let's just set that to uh, maybe hidden. Go to bind, and this will actually allow us to add some functionality to this. Click on variable E uh, controls visibility. And by controls visibility, I'm not saying it controls, uh, it's saying, like, you know, the controls menu visibility. You know, that would be better name. Controls menu visibility. Cool. Okay. Got an enumeration here we're going to be using it's of the e-slate visibility. That's that different options for uh, controlling the visibility of an object in the um, 
Well, this isn't slight. This is UMG, but uh, it works pretty much the same. The same functionality there. Well, the UMG is very different, but uh, you can still use this type of enumeration. So we've got this visibility here. We've got our option here, not a local variable. In fact, a variable. We can go back to the event graph inside of here. If we have uh, an object that's being hovered over, and you say, "Oh, well, what is that object?" It's going to be uh, the controls button. Uh, which, if we go back to the designer, we can find out which one of this is. This is the controls button. Let's rename that. Thought I could get away without renaming it. Not quite. Go to the graph, magazine the controls button. So this is a reference to that button. Plug it right into there. That way we're going to see, are we hovering over the controls button? If we are hovering over it, set its visibility. And how do we set its visibility? We're just going to go ahead and say, set E controls menu visibility. Because this is being plugged directly into the actual visibility here. We get this and plug this in. When we make changes to this value, like we are here, it will change the visibility of the actual uh, panel here. You see it has get visibility zero bound to it. That's the same name as the function that we're inside right now. Go to the event graph and see. So when we hover over it, we want the controls menu to be visible. And when we don't hover over it, we want it to be hidden. Compile and save. Go to menu. Hit play. Hover over controls. There it is. It's a little bit of a process to figure it out, but hopefully, hopefully that's helpful. Uh, it took me a little while to figure out how to do the hovering and control stuff. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I like I like to do hover uh, buttons and things like that. So uh, there you go. We've got some functionality on our controls now. We've got our player one functionality. The only thing we have left to do is our player two. Uh, so our menu works and everything's looking great. Um, what we're going to do now is we'll make a little bit of a, uh, a fun little background for the menu. So. We'll, we'll actually, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll save that for the next tutorial. We'll make a little fun background that uh, actually displays like a little bouncing ball to, to kind of sell people on the game. So we'll cut it here, and in the next video, I'll uh, we'll set that up. So thanks a lot. Um, if you appreciate this video, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. I also have fan funding set up if you want to help support me. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.